Polite Inquiries, the Knight Pinch Hitter edition. Day th four leads. <laughs> Just about held it together, <laughs> both of us. Uh, Knackle asks, did Brendan McCullum pin Jeffrey Boycott's Joe Root doesn't play white wall shots column to the dressing room wall? Um, for anyone who's not seen this, basically after the first test at Lords, uh, Boycott wrote a column uh, for the Telegraph saying that Johnny Bairstow and Ollie Pope in particular were uh, being failed by a system that prioritised T20 cricket and uh, you, you never see Root play the scoop ramp or any fancy shots. He doesn't need to because he's bloody good at all others. Yeah, but I suppose now he's just showing that he's good at that as well. Um, I'm going to say something that I'm going to immediately regret. Um, we've got your own Morgan replacement there and, you know, out in the middle, <laughs> reverse, you know, reverse scooping some of the best bowlers in the world. Um, Josh Butler's busy anyway, he's going to open the batting according well, to Sangakara. Well, so. did you hear, yeah, Sangakara said, this is the thing, yeah, we're, tr we're just about holding it together when they're talking about this England team. And then you've got <laughs> one of the greatest players of all time being like, yeah, and yeah, send him in to open. He's, every, everyone is losing their, <laughs> losing their minds with this England team, and that's only a good thing. Uh, Andy and Brum asks, what's sillier, Roots reverse for six off Wagner or Williamson's reviewing? I actually don't think Williamson's reviewing was that silly um, because some of those LBWs are really hard to judge. I mean, I, I said after the one uh, that I think... Was it I the second one? I think the, the second right? one of the two, I said, well, you know, at least DRS is there for the howler, isn't it? And it turned out it was a perfect decision. So I don't know. I think it's really hard. Uh, man from the Seven Hills asked, was that Billings' attempt to channel his inner Safraz Ahmed? Um, I don't know whether Safraz Ahmed's sort of driven from, from London to Leeds at about 1am on a... No, no. So we got in about 2 o'clock, didn't we? Probably didn't sleep. Well, I think we know he didn't sleep that much. Um, he actually did really well to catch it between his knees. Yeah, yeah, it was so good. There was that reverse angle where he sort of, I don't even know how he does it, he scoops it up as well at late. It's seriously good. Yeah, it's absurd. And also we should work out his miles to cap ratio. <laughs> As having done that drive for the last test in the Ashes and then done that tonight, he, um, yeah, he's putting, he's put a shift in. Alex asks, are there similarities between the early stages of McCullum's England and Klopp's early Liverpool? Um, I actually think the opposite of this. I think that the comparison that you need is um, McCullum is Marcelo Bielsa. Um, it's kind of fitting seeing as we're in Leeds. Um, but there's, there's, there's a, actually a mural when you're walking to the ground um, where there's a little thing written on it saying um, a man with new ideas is a madman until his ideas triumph. Um, and then producer Graham obviously pointed out that what will actually happen is we'll have Baz sort of sat on a plastic stool pitch side when England are bowled out for 60 because defence <laughs> doesn't actually really matter. There's, I mean, the other thing about um, the Bielsa thing is one of Bielsa's key thoughts is that Football is a meritocratic sport, but it's not coached meritocratically, whereby the best players get the best coaching, they get the best advice as well. And for example, one of the things that he's done with players who have not had that coaching is tell them things like, you know, here's how, it, how you make plays, here's how to be more effective with the ball, here's why you don't actually need to hoof it, it's actually easier to pass. And part of their movement in the way it is, is so that every player has space, because, you know, weaker players need space. And McCullum, you know, to fill in the Bielsa side of it, as someone who said to these players, you need to play a certain way, I need to keep it simple for you, go and enjoy playing that way, go and enjoy playing the way that it comes quite naturally to you and let me kind of take all the doubts and stuff like that. Because it was a bit there with, with the way um, Jack Leach talked about Stokes. You know, yeah. Stokes is basically playing the part of his ego, his hype man and the devil on his shoulder. <laughs> and because Leach doesn't have those three and it's working. Um, Satya Cam asks, surely the remarkable Heldell duo deserve a win for their efforts in the series. Can we, can we stop trying to make that nickname happen? It was no. really bad on day one and I think it's even worse on day four. We're really tired. But the, uh, the other thing about it is I, I think it's quite funny that in their own way that like, they're, they're breaking all these records and everyone around them's failing. And I can't remember who made the point. I think it might have been on Twitter, it might have been you. Um, but essentially the two players that this New Zealand team lost last year in BJ Watling and Ross Taylor. Ultimately, their replacements have been the two who've stood up and everyone else has failed around them. Uh, Reese asks, two and one, is this the end of the road for Crawley and is it time to recall Burns? I think Crawley will play against India. Yeah, I think he'll play against India. I'm not sure about South Africa. Um, it's weird, I'm in, a, I'm in a constant state of flux with this because by design, he is the perfect opener for this team. But the way he's playing and the, the indecisiveness as well. He cracked, you know, a few nice drives. One of them resulted in a run out. Uh, and then the manner of that dismissal. I, I totally understand about, you know, playing attacking shots. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm totally on board with that. But 
the, we, but that doesn't mean that we can't critique the execution of those shots. And that that ball wasn't there to to drive in the way that he did. And it was ultimately such a meek end to what started to look like a corner being turned. Yeah, for Burns, I think, I don't know, I can't really see a way back at the moment, I think. But I don't know. It's well, they're going to the do something mad. The country, they're going to do something mad, though. It's going to end up with like Harry Brook opening. and well, then, no, well, well, sorry, we've already talked about it. Joss. Oh, yeah, Joss, Joss straight in. Him, so. Get him in. Jay asks, is Jack Leach Johnny B in disguise, written off and performs brilliantly? No, because Johnny Best has always known he's good. And I think Jack Leach is only just realising how good he is. We'll see you tomorrow.